Here before us, first of all, let me thank Mr. President for bringing her forward for confirmation because she is one of the best we have in Kano. She is one of the best we have in Kano. Mr. President and colleagues, the nominee we are seeing comes from, quote unquote, the conservative north. But yet, but yet, she was able to go to school, not only went to school, yes. but went ahead to read medicine. Yes. And now she's a fellow in the medical profession, a first class consultant. But yet, she upholds our tradition, our tradition that allow for respect, that allow for decorum in the way men and women behave. And she did not stop only at the medical profession, her point of, you know, her, her profession. But as well, she's a very, very good administrator. Because he veered off and became an administrator, a commissioner of higher education. She has done very well. She has done very well. You could see from the way she started uh, to introduce herself without doing anything. Without doing anything. On her own. On her own. On her own, Mr. President. <laughs> yes, me. He wanted her to start with her children. She started on her own. But I thought she started with her voice. Okay. And so we, 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 we conclude on her and, and then advise the Senate. Mr. President, we are proud of her. She's an epitome of our tradition and culture. And yet, very, very educated. And hard working. Thank you, my <laughs> Mr. President, this is the kind of way we want our children to be. I want my daughter to be like her. Mr. President, I want your daughter to be like her. Mr. President, well, I, by virtue of my provision, uh, by, by my, my position here, I would have said she should just buy and go, but I would not do that because of my position. But I know it were, well, I know if my junior brother Kao comes up to speak, he will say so. Mr. President, I don't need to speak any longer about this. She has spoken for herself. She's first class. And his CV is there. He's, he's, it has spoken everything about her to all of us. Mr. President, let's just uh, allow her to make some comment and then she take her leave. Mr. President, I so submit. The civil senator, Hunger. We invite the civil senator Ismail Akau. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, my dear fellow distinguished uh, colleague, I am Suleiman Abrahman Kau uh, from Kano South Senatorial District, Kano, Mr. Uh, President. Mr. Chairman, I don't want to talk much, but uh, last week, when we are emphasizing, we, the people of Kano State, of a withdrawal of one of our daughter. Suddenly, from your announcement, we just had the name of our Dr. Maria from Bunkure, Kano South. We became excited and commend Mr. President of doing so. Not because she appointed her as described by DSP, but 
She's the first card carrying minister from 1999 to death from marginalized Kano South Senatorial District. Therefore, Mr. President, I must awfully commend Mr. President of appointing her or appointing one of us. Not one of us alone, one of our best who demonstrated her capacity during her tenure as commissioner from 1999 uh, to 2003. Although she is a professional, as uh, described by my big brother, DSP, but one good part of her, she is connected with grassroots. She is connected with grassroots because she was born in Bunkure, school, primary school in Bunkure. Her two secondary school, Arabic secondary school, Tudungwada, and Garko Science secondary school are all from Kano South Senatorial District. It demonstrates how connected she is with grassroots. Although she is APC during the election, I am an NPP, but I am highly delighted and commended uh, this uh, appointment. When I start uh, doing her CB, the preamble of her CB, which all of us from Kano, not uh, from Kano South alone, can testify that she is a very diligent family, a married woman, public health physician, erudite educationist, highly organized and efficient professionals who demonstrated her ability, her capacity, who achieved a lot within a short period of time. Thank you, uh, this Senate. I am certain that my dear Anquaman Transporma, the chairman of Correctional Senate, <laughs> will allow the nominee uh, to take her leave. I am more particular and special when I read about her school. By the grace of God, my daughter too is qualified medical uh, doctor. I know how she go through on achieving her dream. She school in a public school, rural school, but see how he addressed the Senate, the Senate today. Thank you, Dr. Maria. Thank you, the good people of Bunkure, local government. Thank you, the good people of Kano South Senatorial District, the marginalized uh, senatorial district in Nigeria. I so submit, Mr. President. Thank you. <laughs> Distinguished Senator Kau, I think the only point of disagreement is the word marginalized. Because if they were marginalized, she would not be here. Uh, the, uh, yes, I agree with you. You have commended the president. And the, the, the president has done well. But you politicians from Kano must not continue the marginalization of our community. Because you have seen that it is not the federal government that is marginalizing our community. It is you, Ismaila Kao, and your other colleagues, politicians in Kano. Uh, 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 Baro, Baro, Baro has supported her, and so and he's happy. So, uh, 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 DSP, you can come under any point of order to correct the marginalization you have been doing since. What, what, Mr. President, Order 52-4. A senator must confine his observations to the subjects under discussion and may not introduce matter irrelevant thereto. My junior brother, Senator Abdurrahman Kawasumela, veered off from what we are doing here by going into something, into a narrative that is not correct. Mr. President, I want to tell you, you know Senator Kabir Gaya. He was a governor. Well, Rimi first. Rimi was a governor of Kano State. He came from Kano South. 
كبير جا كوزن اس كوزن كبير جايا was a governor of Kano State. He was from Kano South. So why do you now say Kano South? Do I need to say more? No. How now do you say Kano South is marginalized? You have produced two governors. Whereas by his own, Kano North only produced governor once, Ganduji, but they produce two governors. How can you say how can you now say you are marginalized? You produce governors two times. Two times, Mr. President. Mr. President, Mr. Pre Kano South, the famous Nigerian uh, Police Academy is located in Kano South. They have a university of technology owned by Kano State is in Kano South. How do Nigerian Law School? Kano South. Nigerian Law School. And now you have Bunkuri. You have Maria Bunkuri from Kano South. How do you now say you are marginalized? You are not marginalized. Mr. President, I'll just submit. Uh, the, the very respected Deputy Senate President, uh, thank you for the elucidation and education. Honestly, from what you are saying, uh, it's out of tune for us to ask the mayor like I want to apologize, but uh, he doesn't need to. Uh, because all we need to do is to so all we need to do is to is to go by our rules. So your point of order is sustained. Uh, distinguished Senator Isunaso. Thank you, Mr. President, sitting as chair. My distinguished colleagues, my name is Senator Osita Isunaso. I want to first of all commend Mr. President for the appointment of the nominee, and also to endorse what the Deputy Senate President have said in relation to the character and personality of the nominee. But we must ask you some basic questions. That is why you are standing before us. Mr. President, sitting as chair, you will agree with me that COVID-19 took Nigeria and other nations of the world on our words. But Nigeria did extremely very well in managing COVID-19 under the chairmanship of the then SGF, Boss Mustafa. Nigeria was highly commended about the way we managed COVID-19. But we learned from them that we didn't even have the necessary Medicare to approach such pandemic, assuming that it comes again. Then my question would be, as somebody who is well experienced in the medical sector, what would be your advice to the Federal Executive Council in terms of preparedness against a future pandemic like COVID-19? Thank you. The senior Senator Mongono. Uh, distinguished Senate President, Distinguished Senators, my name is Mohamed Tair Monguno. I represent Borno North Senatorial District. My question went first and foremost, I commend Mr. President for nominating you as a ministerial nominee, and it is my hope and prayer that eventually this Senate will confirm your nomination. My question is with regard to the issue of qualification to be a medical doctor, particularly with regard to foreign trained students. Of recent, the avalanche of complaints from all the nooks and crannies of the country, particularly our sons and daughters that have gone outside the country to train as a medical doctor. By the time they come back home, they are subjected to a particular examination. And that examination, the failure rate is about 80%. The failure rate is about 80%. As a medical doctor, in your opinion, what does it, why, why, why is it that there is such a massive rate of failure 
and how do we ameliorate that situation? Is it by stopping those that are desirous of getting medical education outside the country to concentrate? And then the problem is that our medical schools do not have the requisite capacity to admit all our young men and women that are desirous of being a medical doctor. And that is what is driving them to go outside to seek medical education. But by the time they come, it is very difficult for them to pass that examination. And I know some that are now up to 10 years, every year they will write, they will not qualify. And then the fees that you are supposed to pay for you to qualify for that examination is very, very exorbitant. It's in the range of 500,000 to 1 million. So somebody from a poor background cannot afford to pay for that examination fee. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues. My name is Dr. Tony Moye. I represent the people of Anambra Central District. Uh, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, first of all, let me thank Mr. President, irrespective of political party affiliation, by appointing this lady. I never knew this lady from Adams. I'm not from Kano State. I'm not also of APC political party as a president, although I was before. But I'm very impressed by this appointment. Why I'm very impressed about this appointment is because this appointment shows there is dignity in labor. This appointment shows reward for somebody who has worked so hard. What impressed me most with this resume of this lady is that this is a lady who could not even get a credit in English language as of the time she sat for SSE. But being that she was determined to succeed, she went to School of Basic Studies in Kano, did IGMB, so as to qualify her to proceed further. At the age of 40, 40 years, this lady became a fellow of West African College of Physicians at age of 40. It's very rare in Nigeria for a lady to aspire, and at the end of the day, she succeeded in becoming a fellow of West African College of Physicians at age of 40. This is a rare feat this lady has done. In addition, she went to read Masters in Public Health. That's part that she's a consultant already. She's today a holder of Master in Public Health. So I'm very impressed by her appointment. But I have one question to ask. Uh, my dear nominee, my colleague, if by God's grace this Senate confirms you, I remember of Fair Executive Council, irrespective of the portfolio you'll be assigned to. What are you going to do? What steps are you going to do to boost immunization policy in Nigeria, especially northern Nigeria? Because the expanded program on immunization was launched in Nigeria in 1979. Immunization, especially children below the age of 12 years. But today in Nigeria, where you have the least level of vaccination as a concern in Malaysia is northern Nigeria. Very sad. That's why I see a lot of diseases, especially the children suffer, the diphtheria and others prevalent in northern Nigeria. So my question is this. If you are confirmed and a member of this cabinet, what are you going to do to help to bring the immunization program? That program was launched in 1979. So northern Nigeria can come at least near par to what is obtainable in other geopolitical zones in Nigeria. Thank you, Mr. President, for this opportunity. God bless you. This is Senator Omae. Excellency, the Senate President, sitting as Chair of the Board. Uh, Excellency, thank you for the opportunity. Let me commend very highly the nominee for a very beautiful presentation of our regime, and to congratulate you very highly for your journey in life so far. I'm very proud of what I have seen here. Your Excellency, let me also commend this Senate. You know, sometimes uh, when the public uh, wants to criticize the Senate, 
over this beautiful job we are doing. They do it out of context. And uh, I am sure that they don't care to listen to the regime as being read out by the nominees before us. So let me commend you and commend the Senate for a very beautiful job uh, we're doing. I've looked through your resume, and uh, it is a state of joy and uh, something to thank Mr. President very highly. Uh, some people came here and said for the first time uh, they have been nominated as Minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria from their senatorial zone. So uh, Mr. President has this gift of not only fishing out for the best, by doing everything possible for balancing. I am very concerned, Mr. Senate President, uh, about a particular you know, uh, program in the health sector. And this program is a situation that the Medical Association has allowed where you will be a medical doctor in public institution and you also have your own uh, private clinic. There is a competing interest here, Mr. President. And uh, I tell you, I have a very bad experience of this. My father, may his soul rest in peace, had a, a surgery in teaching hospital in Nugu sometime. And he was seen by a very good uh, surgeon, did wonderful work, and he was made alive. When the same uh, problem came out again, and he went back to the same hospital, the consultant told him to rather come to his own clinic. And being satisfied with the works of that consultant, he went to his own clinic. And the consultant did a beautiful job, and then, of course, put an infusion and left home. In the night, there was a reverse, you know, blood was rather coming into the uh, uh, the, 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 the infusion rather than the water going into the body. And there was nobody to attend to him. The, the nurse had slept off. These private clinics, most of the time, they had very slim number of workers. And so you find out that it's a very competing you know, uh, interest. My question is, is there any way we can take a second look? When I was governor, I made it very clear that if you are going to work in a hospital, please, you will not have a private clinic. And so we have to do a balancing. If you are going to work in the public institutions, you know, and the public uh, uh, health, you have to find a way not to have a private clinic. This is very important because most of the time, as we are saying the, the salaries of uh, you know, health uh, workers should be increased, the problem is not even the salary. It is patriotism. When this is done, can you now give us all the attention as far as public health institutions are concerned? Second one is to appeal to you. We have one vital institution in our medical university in my state. When I was there, I built dialyzer factory. And the dialyzer factory is the only factory that produces dialyzer in the whole of Africa. And I was mad to also obtain a patent in the name of a Bonny State government. My question is, is it possible to give attention to this factory so that we can replicate it even in the six geopolitical zones and be able to exp export this very important aspect of kidney care to West African countries and the other African countries? Thank you, Mr. Please, Mr. Senator Omai, she's going to answer your question. But the two things you didn't mention, did your father survive? Oh. No, my father died because of uh, the negligence of uh, you know, that private hospital. So I'm, I'm an orphan, uh, Mr. <laughs> so you have to find a way. You have to find a way to treat me better as senior president. <laughs> May so rest in peace. May so rest in perfect peace. I will, I will father you. <laughs>
let, let me listen to the civil senator Hanga. You have a nominee from Kanu in front of you. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I'm Senator Rufai Hanga representing Kano Central. I just went out to take my injection in your officer. Uh, <laughs> but I believe the deputy, your deputy, sir, and my colleague here must have spoken on my behalf. So I think I stand by whatever they said. Thank you very much, sir. The, the nominee in totality. Thank you. I support the nominee, sir. Thank you very much. The last question. Thank you, the President of the Senate and my dear colleagues. My name is Darlington Wokocha. I represent the entire Nigeria, but Adia Central in particular. Madam nominee, I'm impressed with your resume, but I want to veer a little bit into another area, that is education. Because I can see your page five of your uh, resume, your CV. Uh, you say some are colleagues and achievement as a public servant. And I can see that out of the 10 items, the are colleagues attracted, you know, all of them are hinged solely on education matters. I have a concern which so many people and so many quarters have espoused as well. And that concern is the way history as a subject in Nigeria is going completely dead. And I know history as a subject touches every aspect of our existence, both medical, social, economic. Because if we do not have a memory bank of what happened yesterday, it will be very difficult for us to calculate and measure what will happen today and tomorrow. And I know in our secondary school and primary schools, those days, history was very key. It was almost like a compulsory subject, which guided our performance and our expectations and the way we related and worked within our society. If at all that you are appointed as commissioner education, or in, minister, sorry, or in any way you are part of the executive council, Will you raise your voice? Now we are working very hard trying to recreate the Nigerian visibility in the uh, 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 tourism. Will you lend your voice to say it so strongly that history as a subject should be made as a compulsory course or subject from our primary school to the uh, secondary and tertiary? Because that will help us. For instance, today, we can have our Naira see all the uh, uh, prominent men shown in the currency our children are carrying. But if you ask them, how did this person manage? What and what did they do to feature in these notes? They do not have the history. They don't know anything about it. So I think for us to strengthen our economy, we need history to guide our pathway. Will you, in any way, lend your voice to making sure that history will be a compulsory subject in Nigeria's system? Thank you.